Okay. Yeah. Yes. It's live now. I think we can start. No problem, huh? Yes. God, our loving Father, we come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help as we are gathered together. We pray for your guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct this panel discussion with the spirit of wisdom joy and enthusiasm send down your spirit that he may lead us that we may be guided that we may wisely go through this session may your blessing be on all of us that this may bear the desired fruit Amen. Yeah, good morning to one and all present here. The great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. Quotes. Herbert Spencer. It gives me immense pleasure to stand before you this morning to welcome everybody for this panel discussion on Age of Lead 2020. First of all, I would like to uh, give the theme of this Edulate 2020 a panel discussion. Education is a process of strengthening the capacity of the education system to reach out to all the learners. It involves restructuring the culture, policies, and practices in schools so that they can respond to the diversity of the students in their locality. Today in the education system, amazing things are happening. The global and the knowledge-based economy with its infusion of digital technology and network have created a new paradigm shift. There is a shift in the present learning system, shift in maintaining the academic standards, free academic space, teaching life skills and soft skills, shift from competition success to cooperation success, so on and so forth. Our education system should provide societal transformation and education revolution has to take place. And equal access to education system empowers people to be independent and helpful members of an inclusive, barrier-free society. This decade is not just about education but all aspects of transformation of the education system. The philosophy of education is not new in India. In the ancient education system, all children learned together according to their abilities. India has a rich cultural legacy for education. It observed the children's abilities, constructed the curriculum according to the individual's needs, valued the social benefits, allowed more time to learn most specially designed materials, educating children in ordinary schools and provided uh, role models of achievers. In the present postmodern education system, education be be become our birthright. Inclusion is in education is about child's right to participate and our educational institutions duty to accept all children. And technology is an integral part of the educational system. For education, for all, digital education is the only positive alternative and online education is gaining momentum now. India is a country of diversity and pluralism. Diversity in gender, religion, caste, etc and diversity in the space of life. Let us celebrate the diversity in India by including every individual to participate in education. The purpose of this panel discussion is to expose the stakeholders to share their experiences, educational practices, and explore the strategies 
to promote transformative education. Educate 2020 is the theme. And as teachers, how are we going to lead the students in turn about the society? How are we going to turn the society? Each one is a leader. And would you like to lead? It is quite challenging, but it is imperative to think critically and creatively to create a suitable and challenging environment that encourages the change in education. There is a need to provide a forum that stimulates discussion on leadership roles, education for economic upliftment, education for entrepreneurship, teaching and learning environment. It goes on and on. Teaching strategies, flexible curricula, assistive technology for diverse learners, evaluation patterns. It goes on and on like this. This panel discussion will bring together the academicians, the researchers, the policy makers, the practitioners in the area of education in a single platform where knowledge sharing and academic partnerships across the globe can be achieved. The various insights shared by the panelists would, be, would help to strengthen the framework of education. We hope that the discussions will provide a strong theoretical lens to implement the same with more vigor in all educational institutes and also motivate social science to undertake research studies in these areas. The Stena Martitians take this opportunity to thank all panel members and the participants who are eager to witness this enlightening discussions. The panelists are going to highlight the in, their insights. I hope they have an interactive, inspiring and igniting sessions. Now coming to introducing the panelists, it gives me immense pleasure in welcoming Dr. Thelma, um, CEO, Shalom Academy, and guest faculty, and also retired professor of St. Christopher's College of Education. She is the faculty guest faculty of Umayyad Nursing College, and she is the uh, she has a rich experience of thirty years serving in Christopher's College of Education. She has been the member of the panel presentation on symposium on gender, ICT, and education conducted by the US Consulate General, Chennai, and Inter Education in India. She was also the orator of the Kalinga TV channel program on a debate on the theme Who Contributes More on the Growth of the Child? She has been the resource person. She has a, a rich experience and she has been conducting various programs on the national and the international level. I welcome you, ma'am. Next, I would like to introduce Dr. Rajendra. Learning makes a man fit company for himself, says Anon. So I would like to introduce Dr. Rajendra, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Delhi University. He has specialized in physics and his areas of interest are ICT in education, teacher education and science education. He has a rich source of knowledge. He has presented and published various research articles. He has organized conference in the national and the international level. He is a very good expert and I am happy to welcome you, sir. Welcome you, sir. Next is I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Maria Anita, a retired professor of Nirmala College. Her area of interest is geomorphology, GIS, and remote sensing. The great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. I could find the action within her, reading her rich experience. She is the expert of and chairperson and member of board of studies for various universities. She has been an expert, subject expert, for the government's uh, school of Tamil Nadu textbooks from 9th standard to 12th standard. And she has been the reviewer, author, and she has been presenting and publishing 
uh, a very good number of research papers and she has been the doctoral committee member as as well as the adjudicator of phd thesis and she is very active in curriculum development and modification organized field trips study tours field surveys and we are indeed happy to have you uh, have you amongst us ma i welcome you next i would like to introduce dr tiago we know him he is a renowned educationist in the field of ict research methodology statistics and educational technology he has rich experience of teaching in various educational organizations he has published more than 75 artic articles in various national and international journals also presented more than 125 papers he has served as the resource person for various national and uh, international seminars and workshops and conferences a life without a passion has no solid foundation always remember where you started quotes of an educationist so even during the pandemic period he is serving as a resource person to various national and international uh, workshops seminars and conferences i welcome you sir next i would like to welcome reverend father uh, uh, maria lewis father has been a great source of in inspiration father is the uh, father uh, served in the don bosco college of education for the past uh, 10 years he has been uh, serving uh, he was the founder principal i could say he is the founder principal of don bosco college of education and research institute dharmapuri so how much work he would have uh, did there i really witnessed he received gold medal and ba from the university of pondicherry he is a writer and speaker he writes articles in magazines on self development and religion he has authored books on educative systems of don bosco he is the founder of the journal don bosco journal of educational insights and he is an innovative educator conducted exhibition of teaching learning materials and his area is more of value based teaching learning and he has been conducting exams without invigilators a uh, one highlight i would like to quote to us so he has been having an honesty shop in his uh, college of education it is a commendable service i could witness once again uh, i welcome you father once again i thank you for accepting our invitation welcome you father now uh, the session will go to uh, it is over to dr thelma i now invite dr thelma to take over a session ma'am welcome ma'am good morning one and all uh, it's a great privilege to be in this platform sharing our expertise as well the ideas for the future at the outset first of all i would like to congratulate stella martina college of education for this wonderful wonderful platform to share the views of the experts right from our capital city till the end of our uh, capital uh, of the our nation till the end of the south collecting all people and a one platform relating to edu league 2020 so i congratulate the organizers i congratulate the principal and we salute for this particular event of panel discussion being the first one to go go ahead with in the educational sectors to my knowledge so with this let me get into edu league 2020 and the topic for which i am going to deal right now is education for entrepreneurship 
education for entrepreneurship is very much needed uh, i think we can get along with the slides jagu sir please go ahead with the slides so what is the purpose of education when this question is asked the answer was education must provide entrepreneurial skills this was the answer from our past president dr apj abdul kalam so the word entrepreneurship is always associated to our knowledge it is always associated with business industry and corporate sectors it is a powerful tool to create job and uh, to improve economy what happens if the top level entrepreneurs and the company leaders ideas and views are not properly understood by the subordinates who are not trained in entrepreneurial skills if the workforce does not possess the ability to follow the work plan the objectives of the organization will not be realized so what we are supposed to do world education forum 2020 states human skills are equally important as technical skills to help students travel in the changing world and if we look back to the wonders it is beat the pyramid of giza or uh, the great wall of china without the human endeavor without the participation of manpower being employed it is very difficult to get those massive structures to be in world are uh, we are enjoying right now so what a amount of skills would have been needed to the way, very well very well our uh, world economic forum 2020 declares there is untapped talents to fill the gap in the emerging jobs so it is in our hands where we miss to identify the talents uh, from where we should start to infuse skills so that is the greatest question before us are our students properly groomed to become the needed for workforce can they survive in the ever changing society with their skills gained from the schools so this is the biggest question and when we talk about entrepreneurial skills entrepreneurial skills are the skills exercised by the entrepreneurs that include initiative perseverance creativity foreseeing tenacity team work time consciousness resourcefulness passion understanding the risk and owning responsibility they have to be gradually but firmly established in students adaptability persistence and hard work these are the key keys to success in small business but they are the three important attributes no matter what your endeavor is tolerance of ambiguity this classic trait is the definition of risk taking the ability to withstand the fear of uncertainty and potential failure this is what is needed for any any entrepreneur these skills are very much needed it, it, it all boils down to being able to successfully manage fear we have the power to control our thoughts when we commit mentally our actions follow we should have the vision 
entrepreneurs often face naysayers because we see the future before the future plays out its role so we should be alert on the move to predict the future what the future needs and give what we are supposed to present to our wants you have to be several steps ahead of the market says matic yahoo i have somehow it has a failure it it has it hasn't come out with uh, there is a hpt model for educational institutions which will be posted later wherein i talk about organizational analysis need analysis and the evaluation analysis so when we could get along with all these three areas definitely our entrepreneurship will be much more than what we practice right now and as teachers and as students as teacher educators the curriculum has to supply all these needs and the curriculum which i define is yes the slides come so you can take it one by one jagu sir present it one by one i have almost gone okay okay there should there should be some match between okay curriculum i have defined curriculum as let me repeat there are so many curriculums on on the educational platform but i have def defined it as yes it is a course of study program that builds the capacity of the learners within and beyond the four walls of learning to exhibit and develop their skills develop the constructive skills that are needed for the benefit of oneself and the society for an enriched lifestyle that promote peace and prosperity continually this is the definition that i have given for curriculum and therefore i would like to and what do we say about the entrepreneurial skills we have to imbibe in our students the skills that are needed somehow the egg is hatching you know uh, it has to come out it has to come out are we going to wait for that egg to be hatched or what anyway there is some technical te technical uh, issues when you see the egg being hatched it just comes out of its own so this is what i used to say when there is an egg uh, an egg can be broken in two ways one from the outside and one from the inside and when it comes from the in when outside the egg gets spoiled or it goes to be consumed as an egg as it is but when it is opened from the inside a life begins when the egg is opened from the inside a life for so many begins and that should be the attitude every one of the educators as well as the students all that are learned must have such an effort come out of your shell life within the shell come out with your all your energy with all your expertise to give new form to the world to be helpful to the world right so this with this let me conclude that we have to provide necessary environment to our students and that is what our responsibility is to make entrepreneurs to lead the nation to lead the society to lead our family the society and the nation so with this
let me conclude that everybody is going to be the entrepreneur because because even the very birth or uh, not only students of science but everybody knows how competent we were when we were born amidst all the eggs we were able to achieve and that is the potential that is the energy every human is embedded with but somehow in our in the course of our uh, growth we lack something somewhere are we able to retrieve those skills that made us to get into a good form of a human being shall we revive that again and exhibit that into the educational sectors and if that be is going to be for everybody the same spirit that we have come out to the world with all our might with all our energy and yes the future is going to be a wonderful arena for everybody to live on so with this let me conclude congratulating and thanking stella martituna college of education for giving me the opportunity thank you one and all Ma'am, you have to unmute your mic. Ma'am, that was an excellent presentation. I have a question for you. Since you are talking about education and entrepreneurship, sure. I would like to know what kind of jobs in future going to be. You are talking about life skills, entrepreneurial skills, etc. so i would like to hear from you ma'am ma'am i would like to say one thing yeah somehow somehow the idea of entrepreneurship everybody is thinking only the top level management let me tell you repeatedly that hmm. when the top level management is having all wonderful thoughts and plans and everything unless the lower level management is able to uh, executed properly like how it was conceived by the top heads it will be it will not go match it will not match with that and it will not get along with the proper processing of any company for that matter be it an industry or a company so the entrepreneurial skills is a basic skill i would say it is the basic skills needed for every human beings to carry themselves to conduct themselves in whichever area arena they are dealing with so it not necessarily you need to be the top level person you can be the bottom level person also to understand the concept and execute it accordingly so this way every individual has to have entrepreneurial skills so okay. it would be better even if we have it in the uh, school level that's what i would yeah. like to say and that so i have one more question for you how yes. is present day schooling going to prepare for the skills how they how will yes, they prepare definitely yes the thing is uh, they are having um, really really our educational system is really good in in my opinion and you and i were brought up only with that system of education but somehow now it is all oriented towards what i would say uh, examination oriented and therefore the skills that you and i received during our schooling system it i don't know i don't say that it got faded away but i would uh, definitely say that some more uh, concentration is given to some other area by the parents as well the educators 
because there are mushroom growth of educational institutions uh, and uh, and they want to come out with the uh, paper uh, marks the marks in their grade sheets so they tune the students for educational purposes not entrepreneurial purposes if only they are going to do entrepreneurial skills included in the school level definitely they are going to be a very because our manpower is so great and if only we are going to do with that definitely we can yeah. achieve a yeah. lot yeah uh, have i answered your question ma'am yes sure the present system is also uh, nearing to that uh, i think so yes we have yes. we have a positive expectation of things that is which is going on right now thank you ma'am for your excellent presentation thank you now, now i would like to request dr rajendran to present his insights dr rajendran please unmute your mic sir one announcement for the participants if you have any questions you can post it in the chat box are you able to see the screen madam yes yes sir uh, thanks to stella martiti and college of education for inviting me to be the part of the panel discussion on agile 2 2020 um i'm i'm talking in the uh, in the area of education for economic uplift um I, my argument is 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 following argument the following list of argument of list of arguments i'm going to make it uh, introduction and then education and economy and higher education how it influences the economic uplift and uh, status of higher education in india and then concluding uh, what next for that so education leads to the human capital it is a human capital theory says that education is one of the it is an investment that makes that makes a human capital so it improves the individual income living standard it also impacts on the humans uh, people's health household structure uh, etc so increase in the enrollment influence the raise of gdp when you look into the various kind of glo globally those developed countries are uh, developing countries the Uh, the enrollment and then gdp are correlated and india being a being having a lot of youngsters it is population among the youngest in the world it is a large number of uh, almost 40 to 50 percentage of the population falls under 15 to 35 year old so india has the potential to um, potential to grow better um, better being being a work being a strong workforce having it but one has to see that there is a shift in the industrial based economy to information based economy in the last 2 3 decades this made the uh, job market demand the high skilled professional they can drive the economy on the other end there is there is a change in terms of the in terms of the asset is concerned so intangible global intangible asset uh, 70% of the global enterprise value is fall with the intangible assets when compared to the physical assets in the uh, 40 50 years before the physical assets has a something like 70 80% of the global uh, enterprise value so this shift also demands some sort of a uh, skilled professional uh, uh, professional professional uh, whichever the country has the high skilled professionals uh, more number of high skilled professional they have the uh, chances of chances of make, making the country in a economically well 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 well, well position so higher levels of education lead to the higher labor productivity uh, it 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 can be in the form of economic growth it requires the educated club workers managers entrepreneurs and citizen modern technologies must be invented innovated and put in place and then maintained so uh, so the basic idea is if 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 we are having a high skilled professional the country has the chances of having a better economic productivity but where exactly india placed in this scenario higher education gross enrollment ratio uh, that was our country's target was 30 percentage by 2020 uh, but when we are looking into the data uh, from 2014 15 our ger was 24.3 and 2018 19 it is 26.3 there is a 2 percentage increase in the last five uh, this five years of increase 
but the one difference with the, with respect to how we calculate ger in india the ger the calculation is based on the age group 18 to 23 but whereas the global it is 18 to 22 so when we are equating with the global uh, uh, global scenario our ger is falls around 30 plus percent however our 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 ger is far less than when compared to the global average of 36.7 so higher education when we uh, classification when you look into some some common classification if it is the less than 50 percentage of the ger only it, it means they are only privileged to have an access to the higher education if it is a 15 to 50 percentage of higher educational access then one can say that the country is in the massification of higher education if you have if you, the country has the 50 percentage above uh, gross enrollment ratio, then the higher education is universal. So India's scenario still it is it is more of a massification. It is in the effort of massification, massification, and but it's we are not in the upper middle income country range, but we are in the lower middle income countries range. Twenty three point five. Lower the average uh, so average higher education GR the lower middle income countries are twenty three point five. Ours around thirty. So the challenges with the Indian context is. Um, the one one is the regional variation. Southern and the northern part have a better uh, grass enrollment ratio when compared to the eastern part. And the smaller states perform better than the bigger states. Something about the smaller states, uh, states like Chandigarh and Sikkim have uh, 50, 50 and 54 as a grass enrollment ratio. Whereas the bigger state like Bihar has only 13.6 grass enrollment ratio. Even the draft NEP 2019 observes that the, the higher education system is fragmented. Uh, only 20% of colleges, um, it's uh, the student number of students in the colleges, 20% uh, students in the colleges, 20% of colleges have only less than 100 students, and around 50%, 43%, of, 44% of colleges have only under to 500 students, and 16% uh, have 500 to 1000 students. 12% have 1,000 to 2,000 students, and uh, one could see that 8% of students are above 2,000 students in a particular college. This this also speaks of the uh, the nature of colleges prevalent in the country. One positive thing we could see that the female uh, grass enrollment ratio is better than uh, it, it is a little more than the men. So female is 23.26.4, whereas the men is 26.3. The other concern, other issue is the equity. So uh, still, there is a variation in the grass enrollment ratio with respect to the socioeconomic group and other deprived classes. When when we look into the uh, gra uh, India's grass enrollment ratio in 26.3, whereas the scheduled class um, uh, grass enrollment ratio it stands to be 23. Uh, but there is a gra great increase one could be able to see from um, 2014 to 2018, 18-19, uh, uh, from, from 19 to 23. That is a four percentage, and ST also similarly the around four percentage, 13.7 to 17 percentage whereas the whole country uh, the, the, the overall increase is only two percent uh the quality aspect also we need to be looked into uh looked into here um in the post 90s there is a non-serious private players are increased in the education sector especially in higher education the before that it was just over 20 percentage of the um, uh, higher education system as the private players the post 90 found to be more than 70 percentage of the private uh, institutions are Owned by the private players, and the second issue is the post-90 scenario. Uh, the low funding to the higher education, higher education public institution, or uh, uh, higher education that lead to the low funding to the public inst uh, public institution getting a lesser fund is happening. And the third issue is the employability and skill gap of graduates. So even though the higher education is improved from 2004 to 2019, there is some sort of a 6 percentage to 26 percentage. Uh, the, there is a gap between the employability and the uh, uh, skill skill and what uh, the skill required for the industry and the skill acquired by the graduates after their education. So this is a concern. There is a need to address these issues. One of the reasons why we could not able to increase the grass enrollment ratio is the lack of financing for the students from the low income families. So uh, even uh, after the expansion of the private ed educational institution, the low income group could not able to afford to get into the better institutions. Uh, the other issue when we are looking into the uh, innovation aspect, the low spending of R&D affects India very badly. So it leads to the uh, very less number of researchers that has an impact on the innovation and, 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 and uh, non-tangible assets area. So India have only 156 people uh, per million 
um, research uh, per million population, 156 researchers, whereas the mid upper middle income countries and the other developed countries have 1000 plus to 8000 plus researcher for 1 million. This as a uh, the GDP of any country or developed country, developed countries and the GDP when we are comparing the research number of researchers and the country's GDP, if you are have, uh, have a positive, strong positive correlation. So we need to invest more on R&D and we need to we need to invest on higher education to get the more number of researchers will have an will have a positive impact on our economic growth. So what is to be done? Uh, some of the th th some of the uh, uh, random thoughts are building human capital is is a key determinant of reducing the income inequality and helping the social mobility. So we need to build the human capital uh, in to, uh, to reduce our inequality in the country as well as the social mobility, so that India can India can move move, move to the uh, better uh, people have a better uh, better life lifestyle. Uh, sorry, uh, life. Um, uh, but uh, living living status living status to do that more investment in higher education and R&D activities are necessary and increasing the number of public universities or institution is one of the hope for providing the quality education for all socio-economic groups so private institution may not be able to cater um, uh, to, to the deprived class to a, to, a, to a larger extent so the public universities increasing the public university is necessary the other Thelma madam also um, um, mentioned that the need for an entrepreneurship entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial culture that 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 is one of the one of the hope so educational experience of from the educational institution to, to work towards the vibrant entrepreneurial entrepreneurial culture and policies and programs need to encourage the entrepreneurial opportunities to sustain and improve the economic development of the country thank you madam That was an excellent presentation, sir. Uh, I, I have some questions for you. I would like to know, uh, they say that education is both consumption and investment. When you talk about entrepreneur culture, to, uh, uh, there is a, you said there is a need for entrepreneur culture. How are we going to improve the system of education? Sir, I hope I am audible. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Uh, your question is how to how to build build the entrepreneurial culture in the educational system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, ha, madam, some sort uh, some sort uh, the, the policies also looks into the. We need to move towards the skill based education system. One way, one way addressing. On the on the other hand, we need to we need to. Uh, provide an op provide the uh, educational experiences uh, that can that can help an individual to become uh, to becoming an entrepreneur. Um, okay. uh, so, so our education system need to be more open ended instead of instead of instead of a particular content based to content based to uh, problem based with the, with the whatever existing problem how we are going to address those problems. So we require to change from the pedagogical point of view to. Uh, pedagogical orientation also required to change also we need to have we need to have take the real life issues as a part of the curricular content if we are we are we are trying to do that uh, gradually will be in a position to people uh, those learners will be able to able to uh, move towards move towards solving the problem and then get the skills required to be for the uh, required for the future uh, future society that's good sir i have one more question you said about quality. So what is quality according to you? Quality in education. Because we are uh, concerned with the education and uh, economic upliftment. <laughs> right. Uh, so, very, very, very good and then very difficult question. Quality, uh, different people define it differently. Um, yeah. I see that uh, um, uh, quality in uh, quality education is supposed to provide an individual uh, uh, provide uh, provide as a learner should they, they need to get the uh, get the kind of an education that can provide the world of they could, they, could, they they will be able to meet the world of work in a better better they are better prepared for that one yeah. the other end they also need to provide them an, an understanding uh, understanding about their the society they are living in and then to make change within the society. 
yeah so the parameters parameters need to be keep including including things so that it, it need to be the the overall development of the country instead of a, an individual specific growth growth need to be undermined instead of the overall development of the country country how the how how the institution can cater to it okay. if if that need to be focused upon okay maybe infrastructure so, is one end infrastructure okay. is one end but beyond that beyond that it is a culture of culture of how we look at the issues need to be need to be uh, need to be need, need to be developed madam it, it 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 is not a uh, easy question i am already said it is not an easy question it is a ready made solution nahi hai but required required constantly we need to reinvent ourselves sure sir i do accept quality is a relative concept we cannot easily define quality in education and quality depends and uh, it uh, depends on uh, culture to culture and from area to area i do accept your idea it is very difficult to define quality in this situation okay so thank you very much for the excellent presentation i think in the chat box also pe uh, people are uh, commenting saying that it is an excellent presentation sir thank you so much thank you. so next next i, I would like to invite Dr. Maria Anita, be so good they can't ignore you, madam. Be so good they can't ignore you. Say, <laughs> so I think you are going to start with why, where we are, and what we are going to do. We are eagerly waiting for your presentation. Welcome. Thank, back. You. Thank you very much. Good morning to everybody, and. I'm very happy and thankful to Stella Martituna, the secretary principal and the organizing uh, committee for giving me a power place in this podium. So the topic exactly is educator coadis. The word coadis taken from the Latin word meaning where are you going? More poetically, you can put it as with a goest thou. So this, I thought, is a very apt question that we have to ask the educators. I being one, I have to ask myself. So in India, I'm talking more about the scenario of education in India. We have gone through a long history or antiquity of education. From the gurukulam systems in ancient India, where it was one to a small group of students, giving very holistic and the necessary education, but the greatest drawback being it was offered only to the select few or rather to the elite few. So the masses were not educated. Slowly the situation changed with the influx of the colonial rule or rather the Europeans coming into India. We had the missionaries who came here and they started educating the masses irrespective of caste, creed, economic uh, divisions, etc. And that's how the awareness of the Indian masses began to grow until independence. And after that, we know that the Indian government has provided education, or it's rather continuing to provide. And larger masses of people are included in this. I don't know whether it's surprising or uh, whether it, was, it looks like it was actually planned that this edu lead comes in the wake of the passing of the National Education Policy 2020 a few days ago. It was totally unexpected for us. But one, I have not gone through this and I don't know how this will be viable, how far it will be viable. But the positive aspect of NEP 2020 is that it offers education 100% to the age group of 3 to 18. And it is planning to include larger numbers for higher education, quality education. And it's also promising flexibility of education, which I thought is a very good point. But the point here is whether there, are, there is change in government, whether there is change in policies, whether there are changes in the economy, or even if there are, we are confronting pandemics like COVID, the role of an educator and education is very vital for a country. You may have small stop gaps, like the present moment when education and other systems have come 
to a rather grinding halt in some areas, or some of them are just dragging on. But still, the role of education and the role of educator is extremely essential. Now, who are these educators? We find educators are not just teachers, parents, teachers, and all these inspirational personalities, and many, many more can be educators for the society. Earlier, it was shared by parents and teachers normally. When we say parents, I include the whole family. We were a nucleated family. So it was not just the father and the mother, but grandparents, uh, uncles, aunts, etc., who were all, all took the uh, I mean, role of teaching children the values of life. But today, unfortunately, uh, the families are nuclear families, nucleated, very small. And parents are all working members, most of them. And so there is a shift in this role. It's because parents have become more like caregivers, providers of all the ever-increasing needs of students. And they are also become friends of the students. That's how many parents uh, acknowledge themselves. They say we are more of friends than parents, without realizing that the children have enough friends, they can make more and more friends. Friends are available all around them. But they have only one set of parents. So the role of a parent is very, very essential in molding and grooming a child's values and life. So as this change is happening, we find that the shift is moving on. The load is moving on to the teachers. So they are carrying a heavier load. But teachers should never think that this is a heavy load or a labor that is on their shoulders, for this is their call. And that is why teaching is called as a noble profession. Because you are not just in charge of developing the IQ of a student, of giving sound knowledge, but you are there to actually give them a holistic learning, develop their uh, emotional uh, quotient, that is, give them an emo emotional balance, so that over a period of time, you will have a social balance in society. So this is a role, the basic role of teachers. And this role is today becoming more and more heavier for a teacher. Today, when you see the situation in this world, we find that uh, the economy generally, we are moved in, in the, after independence, we are moved in from uh, lower incomes to better incomes better standard of life, our uh, the economy has developed so much, and everything is affordable, available, quality of education has really improved. So many of the institutions are offering it at, at par with the global standards. There is so much uh, happening. But at the same time, if you look at the scenario of, the, of our country today, we find that Sadly, corruption and crime rates have increased tremendously. So we have all kinds of crimes. Just a moment, I'd like to. OK, so we are moving on. We find that with all these developments, particularly you have rapid growth of technology, better standards of living, but crime rate is really increasing. And what are the types of crimes that we have today? It is abuse of children, women, rape and murder, suicides then drug trafficking, organ trafficking, human trafficking, not enough of all that. We have animal trading also. And today, with increase in knowledge, increase in technology, there is huge money laundering happening. And cyber crimes, so many, I'm not even sure what they are and how many there are. So all these are not uh, by the poor or the weaker section. Many of the crimes are committed by the highly educated. 
And uh, this picture shows that it gives a question, where does India stand? Actually, India is considered as among the top three countries for the highest crime rates, which is not something that we can be proud about. So normally, extremes and excesses always leads to greed and avarice. And uh, these uh, characters are very detrimental for an individual as well as for a society. For a society, moderation is very essential. It gives you a very peaceful and healthy life. But moderation can cause a setback in a society. It can just uh, cause layback lay, lay of uh, the mind. So for one-to-one -one interaction, moderation is fine. But for an individual, it should always be accompanied by a pursuit towards excellence of self and a rejoicing in the success of others. I want to underline that because this is slowly becoming a lost character, rejoicing in the success of the others. So now the question is, why is all these happening? Why are they happening, all these crimes, etc.? Why are they happening? Because technology, they say, can provide you everything. But why isn't it providing the most essential? Is it, isn't it available in Amazon or Flipkart or don't uh, Swibgi and uh, what is that, Uber, don't they deliver it to your doorstep? Surely it should be available in all those Phoenix malls or somewhere. No, it's not available anywhere because quality of life and sensitivity of life exists only inside the heart and mind of individuals particularly the caregivers of society, that is parents and teachers. So today's education has a lot of knowledge imparting, sometimes very sound, sometimes not too sound. It's, it has more than its share of technology. But what is essential for life, for a society building, is not there. So it's not just the society to blame. I think we have to also introspect ourselves as an educator to find out, have we changed in our role as teachers? Are our institution, uh, I mean, concentrating on giving only knowledge, or are they also giving ethics, values, and morals as part of education? I think this is sadly lacking in our society. So the question, next question comes as, Technology is growing at a very rapid rate. Yes, it can do a number of things. It's fast replacing everything they say. So I think I have to agree with that. Yes, technology is fast replacing everything. So it's only the thing that is being replaced, not the human mind or heart or soul. It cannot replace that. Can it replace a teacher? And next, the whole society now is thinking, when there is so much of knowledge at just the tap of a button, are teachers really needed in our classrooms? There is enough uh, uh, knowledge through the computers, so so many other methods. So why do we need teachers? We can carry on without them. So really, in education, is knowledge education, knowledge imparting very essential? Or is there other roles for teachers? I find that there are roles which are more important than knowledge imparting for a teacher. A teacher is an inspiration, guide, and mentor. The technology cannot replace their heart and mind, their care, their, con their contributions to the human skills to elevate the mind of a student. A student with high intellectual capacity is not enough. You have to elevate the mind. You have to enlighten the mind. You have to sensitize the heart. And you have to create an empathy, which requires a lot of patience and perseverance. It needs a human touch. So this picture is wonderful because it, it may show a very poor background, but a very rich contribution from one to another. So according to our former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, my inspiration, Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And as an educator, you have 
I can give you an example of the potter and the clay. The mastery of the potter in creating artifacts out of clay. So how much more mastery a human teacher needs when you have the mind of a student instead of clay in your hands. So we don't realize the depth of our responsibilities. A doctor can see the result of his action very soon after a surgery or after a treatment. But for a teacher or an educator, the result of his handiwork can be seen only after many years, probably decades. So we have to be extra careful how we go about it. We have to be very firm because every child, like mud and clay and even rocks, can be processed through very firm hands, through fire of our mind, to be refined so that they can shine and become precious in the world. It is in our hands. But we have to change. So if we don't know the way, India has shown the way through so many of our role models. We have so many people. This picture just tells you about all our role models in different fields. We have writers, literary greats. We have the human touch from Mother Teresa. The art contributors, our constitutional head, Dr. Ambedkar. The philosophy, Dr. Uh, Mr. Dr. Vivekananda. The birdman, Salim Ali. The scientist, Dr. C. V. Raman, the great mind, Dr. Abdul Kalam, and the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. And you have a lady here, Dr. Muthulakshmi Reddy, who, who has paved the way for women entering into the field of medicine and a great contribution to the Institute of Cancer. So all these people and many, many, many more are there to be our role models if we do not know the way. I just take the example, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, what he had done for us. He studied in Britain and he went and worked in South Africa. But uh, during that time, he was not sensitized towards the needs of India. But it was only when he realized that the Indians were losing their dignity, were living lives without dignity under the colonial power. He came back to India to fight for our freedom. So he humbled himself in my mind and in life. And as a man, even without a shirt on his back, he had the power to lead the whole of India through a very long course of the freedom struggle, which was like the birth pangs that we went through, a long period of birth pangs. And finally, he delivered India at midnight, an independent India, through a normal delivery of Satyagraha which otherwise, at that time, any other leader or anyone else from any other country would have definitely resorted to a caesarean section of weapons, arms, ammunition, atom bombs, nuclear weapons, and so on. It was a great endeavor that no one has ever done until today in the world. No leader has ever done this. And he's a great educator that we can follow. We also have our great Dr. Abdul Kalam. So as an educator, as a teacher, as a scientist, as a person who had received 40 doctorates from different parts of the world, he has contributed much to this country. It did not come in a day. He had a humble beginning, and he worked hard. And for, he has always acknowledged the role of his teachers in the formation of his life. So his example alone is more than enough for us to know that the role of a teacher is very essential in the forming of the minds of people all around. So according to him, he has made great travels, which has made him what he is. He made the longest journey, that is the space journey outside, through his space programs. But he also made a longer journey inward, which gave him the insight to live the life that he lived and to contribute in his books, such as Ignited Thoughts, Guiding Spirits, etc., which are really words of wisdom that not only Indians, but the whole world needs. So these great people have contributed so much. And now when the question is, is there a need for a teacher? Definitely the answer is yes, 
not to impart education. I think that even in the future, we may become redundant, but definitely for to form the minds of people. And a teacher in a classroom is extremely essential. And we have to see that we are essential. It depends on us. But we have to bring the change by changing ourselves first. A teacher should be in such that if your absence does not affect the life of your students, then your presence has no meaning in it. If you are a teacher whose absence does not affect the life of a student, then it's better that you are not a teacher anymore. But if each teacher makes an attempt to really care, mold, and sensitize the students, then their presence has great meaning in the life of people. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has, according to Margaret Mead. So you can be the change. And even if you cannot change the world, you can change yourself. And you can also change the people that you meet and the students that you teach. Definitely. All these great leaders have left wonderful footprints for us to follow. So each one of us is called to leave our own footprints on the mind of students. According to Swami Vivekananda, he says, a student's mind is like fresh cement. Be careful what you drop, for you leave a lasting impression. So you leave your footprints, but educator, coadis, mind where you're going. So if you're going to be caught in the quagmire of entertainment, media, and unwanted technologies, you can, it is like a quagmire or a bog. You can be sucked inside. You cannot leave your footprint. If you are a person who is going to get into many troubles instead of concentrating on your student, then you will always be trying to swim out of it. You cannot leave your footprint. If you take too many endowments, and if you are exhausted by the many activities you are doing, you may have to drag your feet. You can never leave your footprint. And above all, if you are a person who believes in shortcuts which the world should not follow, you want to make a fast buck, you want to reach the top, then you can really fly high. Maybe you can really reach the top or the pinnacle. But alas, you have not left your footprint behind. So educator, watch where you're going and savor every step of yours. Thank you for the opportunity given. That was an excellent presentation, ma'am. All our dreams come true if we have the courage to pursue them, says Walt Disney. Ma'am, from your uh, presentation and from the way uh, you were presenting, I have lots of questions. I think in the chat box also there are questions. Due to want of time, I would okay. like to ask you a, a few questions. You have been uh, quoting to Dr. Abdul Kalam, and all great educationists. I think you have imbibed the meaning of education in your life and through your experience. I would like to know how as a teacher will help the students to build resilience in this pandemic situation. Is it possible? I think with your experience, you can answer us. Definitely you can, because yes. especially through this online teaching, you can, if there are students who really need your help, you can make yourself available to them. You can give them counseling, which is very important. But before that, you have to spend your time understanding yourself. So a teacher needs to take inner journeys. You have to think, rethink refine yourself, only then you can give. When you stretch your hand towards someone, unless you have something, it will be empty. So a teacher's hand should never be empty. We should always fill ourselves first with the goodness, with charity. So, And you have to walk your talk. You have to live your life. 
So you need not teach them anything. If you are able to live what you're teaching, your student automatically takes in what they need. You can always uh, network with your institutions or with more phila I mean, philanthropists who are waiting to help society. And with their help, you can reach out to a number of students, not just during the pandemic, even beyond to 2020. Yes. I don't know if I have satisfied your yes, yes, yes. question. Ma'am, I have one more question. Yes, excellent, ma'am. I am getting messages from the chat box saying excellent presentation and thought provoking uh, uh, presentation, etc. Just you. one more question for you. Uh, this is from the chat box. What does the pandemic teach us in the field of knowledge seeking and implementing? The pandemic actually tells us that. All these years, we have been running behind a number of things that we thought were very important. Exactly. But, we, but in the pandemic, we realized that it's not the lesser developed or the more developed countries, countries like America or India. There is no difference. When it strikes you, it strikes you. And you have to save yourself. So in this pandemic then it teaches us that it is the heart, the mind, the soul that is live and let live, help where you can, be obedient to instructions given. So we yeah. are all failed to obey. When a government tells you something, whether it is good or bad, we need to obey. So when we, we as teachers learn to obey, automatically we are setting the role for our children to obey us. So parents and uh, teachers need to obey rules, follow it meticulously, teach the others to do the same, and thereby, you will find that we can reduce this pandemic itself if you follow simple rules that are constantly being given to us, like don't touch things, wash your hands. They are very simple, ordinary things. But if followed correctly, you can be saved. And you and people all around you can be saved. So it's very, very simple. You just live the simple things of what you see around. It's like grandmother's rule. Our joint family used to teach us to obey, to follow the rules, to respect elders and to give. So this is something that we have to follow, not just during the pandemic. We have to teach our children to follow. It's become a forgotten thing at present. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was an excellent presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Tiahu for his, uh, sharing his insights. A life without without a passion has no solid foundation. Always remember why you started. I I would just like to repeat and I, uh, and over to Dr. Tiago. Yes, sir, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so I started my presentation with the past questions already. Mariam highlighted. Uh, we are moving to the life two point oh. So we have divided the 2020 into two, but one is called before the COVID and after the COVID. Now we are in the point, second version of our life we are facing. Uh, we doesn't know when the lockdown will be over. So we are in the lockdown 7.0. So whether it may go to the 8.0 or 10.0, then we cannot be predicted. Uh, still, we are thinking about the, the classroom practice. Apparently, we have to think about the normal life, how we are going with this. See, our new normal life is nothing but our life 2.0. It may go with this kind of small gadgets like face mask, hand sanitizer, as well as tissue paper. So parallelly, we are using a lot of devices, particularly the handheld devices like mobile phone and laptop and all. For this only, we are leading the entire day-to-day -day life. Uh, particularly, uh, when we talk about the before the COVID, uh, we are using mobile phone only for entertainment aspects. But after the COVID, we are thinking to use or we are integrating much for the mobile devices for our teaching and learning. If you look on it, if you take a survey, uh, most of the people are attending the program in the live mode now. If you're looking and if you're taking the survey, how many people are attending the program, the mobile phone, hopefully near 99% or 90% of people are using the mobile phone. Only. So uh, our lifestyle totally may change based on the the devices as well as the new devices also we are incorporating our data to the life. So in this manner only our life 2.0 is going. Now I'm going to talk about in in what way our education may lead 
with the use of the technology. So that is, I'm going to talk about here as an education 4.0. In 1860, the blackboards came to the classrooms. But now the entire scenario is to be changed. The entire classroom, now it's become, now it comes to the, our mobile screen or into a laptop screen. So previously we are talking about the face-to-face -face interaction. After that, we are thinking about the blended learning. Now the entire learning and teaching happen in a virtual mode. So after all, the entire thing, it will be moved to the online mode. Uh, that is the best example I'm going to quote it as education 4.0. These are the things it may lead in 2020. This are the advanced technology may lead in 2020. That's why I'm given the title as the education lead uh, 2020. So what are the technologies? So I'm going to be highlight one by one. The first technology is called augmented reality. The augmented reality, what is the advantage? It may help us to understand the abstract concept in a concrete manner. See this example. So I'm showing the image. This image is showing that to us, uh, if one person scanning the textbook, immediately the artificial air uh, is nothing but the, the exact eye with animated, with the music, everything we may get it in our area. So it means that because previously we could not be show the eye in a 3D, only we can show as a paper only as an image. But now we can easily perceive functions of the eye, the parts of the eye, everything we can see with the use of this kind of augmented reality. For augmented reality, we need a layer, one is called real layer, other one is called artificial layer. If you are blending the two layer, then one is called as an augmented reality. Hopefully, all textbook may convert the end of AR mode in this zone. So after the 2000, even some of the textbooks in Tanado or the, the southern part of here, they are incorporating the textbook with the QR code. What is the advantage? Once the students, they're using the Diksha app, once they scan it, they immediately they get it to the, the animated video or any kind of uh, GIF image, they make it to understand the text about the content. So tool, what is the importance in the sense it may uh, help learners to engage much as well as the, the learning in a meaningful way for this kind of tool is the second uh, advanced tool I, we already use that we're not using much integration Please, yeah. So, I'm sorry, i so sorry, I'm 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 Exact uh, the concepts clarity with the use of this kind of virtual reality. The next thing, virtual lab. What is virtual lab? The virtual lab is giving the much uh, impact uh, in the all of you. My voice. My voice is audible. So is it now? Is it now? Okay, is it working now? Is it working? Yeah, yes, that's okay. Okay, so now it's okay. Now I'm going for my yes, sorry to trouble um in my end. There is a problem with my issue in the power failure here. 
that is why this kind of issue is coming. Yeah. So now I'm talking about the uh, virtual lab. Uh, now, if you look onto the current scenario, we cannot be go and uh, explore the things in our real uh, labs. And all. But once you go with this kind of virtual lab facility, damn sure you can understand the exact things about the virtual lab. Uh, and we can do the, the exact things, what are things you are going to do in the uh, lab. These things we can do directly in the online. So for this, the virtual lab is a need for an hour. Yes, the next, just I'm going to be throw these some examples uh, in the VR. Uh, now she's perceiving how the, the space industry will be there. So even you may see that the industry 4.0, there is a one thing is come as here, that extension is come as here, um, education 4.0. Now I'm moving to the next one that is called artificial intelligence. In this artificial intelligence is talking about uh, uh, the intelligence in an artificial way. Uh, that is called intelligent tutoring systems. It is a computer system that aims to provide immediate and customized instructions or feedback uh, of learners, usually without intervention of the human beings. For this, this kind of artificial intelligence is to be good. If you look onto the, the uh, some of the candidates in the Sophia as a teacher, Parallelly, if you look on the TV news reading also, the people are integrating this kind of artificial intelligence robot system for delivering the news and all. Yes, next one is called Internet of Things. So very soon, our classroom may occupy with this kind of Internet of Things. Uh, the Internet of Things, in the sense it may work in the two ways. One is called sensor, other one is called the, uh, uh, what is it of things so we can integrate all the materials all the things with the use of network we can do everything with the use of mobile phone so how we can be taken in our class in the sense for example the smart board we can control our smart board with the use of our mobile phone instead even the students are entering the classroom automating that and maintaining that adjusting disability mobile application tablets these are things for the uh, higher education in the future even the school level also should be good now I'm going to talk about the telecos data course already there, but it's not 100 persons to be integrated. But very soon, uh, we may use this kind of telecos. It's nothing but telecosting happened through this act. Like uh, recently, the Tamil Nadu government also announced that all the 10 standard or content they are going to be shared with the use of the telecos or data course modes. In the same manner, already have the um, that's a 36 channel uh, of the Swayam Prabha. From there, the students are getting day, 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 and each day getting a lot of information from them. That is what it does. Now, next important tool, uh, I'm going to talk about the web conference. It's already there. Um, after the COVID-19, only we are perceiving what is web conferences. Previously, we know what is Zoom and web center. But after COVID-19, we are exploring much. Hopefully, even after the post COVID, so we may continue this kind of web conferences or online webinar, online seminars in a field perspectives. So, this may be used. The next thing, web costing. This is the best example of web costing because we are doing a live streaming in a YouTube. Uh, actually, we may use some kind or a Zoom to uh, do the live stream, but we are not connecting any kind of participants in our platform. Only the pandemic is that we are projecting train through YouTube directly. So this kind of live stream, we may use that as a web posting. Web posting. Yes, the next thing, we have to increase the social media engagement. Previously, before the COVID-19, the partners the learner may use much of the uh, in, um, social media, but now the people are using for the thing. The next uh, the technology advancements, e advice. So the people are doing to, um, uh, even some of the users who are doing, they're doing for the online admin, so like online counseling, online gu guidance, and steps and all. This kind of thing is needed for an hour for the student side because they don't know whether they have the examination, whether when they conduct examination. So for the queries, the students may ask the teachers fraternity with the use of this kind of e advising. Yeah, so how we can go for effective policy and uh, so effective education uh, 4.0. Uh, if you want to go with effective 4.0, these are the components to 
we have we focus one is called content whenever you develop a content don't make it big content but it will be content uh, we have to go with a small modular approach interact richness content and uh, that content should be available in a online mode that uh, really mode you can go with this so don't make it a big video instead of that we can divide a small small video content and post it online so the best example if you look on the coursera edx we may see this one the coursera and edx the video is very small 8 minutes or 5 seconds that much only so that kind of videos we need the next is called interaction when you go for online the interaction is very less particularly when he may teach the lessons he may teach nearly one hour we don't have space for the learners to interact with us but we have to modify this kind of interaction thing 4.0 uh, it will be goes in a synchronous mode like a face to face but in a virtual mode may going and richness of inter interaction we have to integrate video audio text this kind of thing we have to integrate and provide the stimulus uh, while you're presenting we can conduct some, some kind of small poll or discussion question or case study we can go with this uh so because most of the online platform the very lack in the interactions the next one is called independent of learning because all the online tools is focusing on the independent learning but uh, the assessment wise to be questionable so that is why uh we have to think about the new independent learning we are giving the content in a specific people or a individual instruction we are providing but for assessing purpose we can use some kind of e portfolio techniques or we can collect that students credential with the use of some repository then immediately we have to provide the feedback they have to check the monitoring of the progress frequently and finally the assessment so two more things that the one more thing is called assessment the biggest problem in the online the assessment no we are going with only the one word questions objective only so it's not an issue but the problem uh, attending the last examination only the end one thing is for the percentage do the coursera and edx the platform they are not conducting any long examinations they are providing some kind of continuous assessment element in each module once you finish the each module with assessment task you may get the scores so we can provide the each module some kind of percentage from the percentage summation we can give us the results so don't focus on the examination based we can look on the uh, course work project output or a peer group evaluation self assessment based we have to go for the next assessment strategy the automatic feedback just to be need for another then one more thing suppose the students are submitted assignment automatically electronically it may be check the plagiarism with the use of turnitin software normally we are checking by our end but if the platform some kind of virtual learning platform to help us to be check parallel then is to be good then one more thing the student support for the student support we have to incorporate this kind of education for fun things in our class so it is called ai tutor artificial intelligent tutor is nothing but robot or some kind of uh, mechanism we can be look on it this kind of a tutor the e advice so electronic advice is need for an hour this kind of components it leads the education 4.0 in a wonderful way then we are seeing the pedagogy tutor go again now the need for an hour is for cyber think about in what way we have to design the curriculum uh, to transcend this pedagogy so what is the cyber pedagogy the teaching learning happen in a virtual mode that is called the cyber pedagogy worlds we have to think on this one and next thing we have to incorporate the gamifications uh, the strategy so this was a new pedagogical input the biggest problem when you go for online teaching uh, the problem with this uh, Uh, only the the limited encouragement limited encouragement is there while going for online teaching but if you are incorporating this kind of gamification layer damn sure the classroom should be more full but in the online mode uh, so now we are thinking about the mooc to mooc previously we are talking about massive online open open online course only but now it's moving to the the program massive open uh, online programs so see the recently iit they develop a separate online programs massive online open programs for data analysis very soon the programs ug program pg programs may come into me totally in online uh, these are the tools is good for the virtual meeting uh, then conferencing this are tools is for live streaming so now we are using a live streaming like facebook live youtube live but with the use of streamyard we are going with this kind of live streaming then this type content if you want to develop a digital content in the education 4.0 we have to do this tool or to the a post free cam tinny screen and green dot and 
the learning management system for if you want to give the information so uh, add your idea or share your parallel you assess the students you can use this kind of lms systems if you want to make the classroom in interactive mode we have to depends on this kind of tools meeting pers webex slido ooflap and all uh, then uh, the best problem with uh, when you go for google meet only we don't have the whiteboard but if you are using the, the third party tool it may help them people to be go further uh, this is for the assessment tool for checking the students progress now i'm going to only two slides be over what is education 4.0 Education 4.0 is talking about anywhere, anytime learning. The learning should be personalized or digital instruction based. Flexible delivery. We can be change the delivery mode at any time. Peers and mentors mode. Why, where, not, what, how. So that kind of questions you may get the answer in the Education 4.0. And practical application based. Uh, most of the things the students uh, cannot be write the examination, but. Uh, based on the project based on the modular output when we are providing the marks to the students the student ownership is to match the final one is really important uh in 4.0 emphasize not an examination it will be emphasize the evaluations um this are the four dimensions while you look on to the education 4.0 one is called teaching 4.0 uh learning 4.0 this is 4.0 and service 4.0 the teaching 4.0 is talking about mooc mopa um uh, this is way the future is may going and wearable asset technologies uh, previously uh, when the elders may comes we may remove the ha hats and give the respect to them but now it is if any elders is coming we are removing our headphone or earphone we are giving the respect to them so day to day life we are going with a lot of wearable technology so hopefully our devices may teach much with the with the, so we couldn't be predict which kind of devices may comes in future the next uh, the learning aspect the gamification blended learning is to be a very powerful answer for the learning 4.0 and if you go with the research 4.0 we have to think about the open innovation idea to get it from the different people revolution innovation and innovation cycle also we have to look on it uh, the innovation cycle this and the cycle may rotate it it's not be never end it that research progress going in a circular manner then uh the service 4.0 for the student side it should be university as a platform we have to think that education we have to give us a service so this is the four dimension it goes the future in education 4.0 then finally i summarize with this one um, as a teacher it's a 21st since 21st census teachers we must do uh this four three this three one is and uh, Thing where to be uplift or to be um, in, uh, engage our DQ, then we may be great teachers in the uh, the future learners also. So I request you all to develop these three cues. Uh, then I had to share the, this much acknowledgement of uh, first. I thanks to the Alma ma'am to provide such a wonderful opportunity, and thanks to the all the panel members also. The only the things in between there is a problem powerfully that is why my screen is not visible. So for the time loss. Thank you all, Jay Bharat. If you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you, thank you so much, sir, for your excellent thank you presentation. So much, sir, for your excellent presentation. There are too yes, many questions in the chat box, and due to the want of time, only two questions for you. Okay, one is yes, what sir. kind of what kind of teacher preparation is required to cook? Cope up with the technology of teaching and learning. Yeah, What so that is the answer. Preparation? Teacher preparations. Uh, that's one word answer to TPAC. We have to develop the technological knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, content knowledge. As well as we must know how to integrate these three things. So based on the content, we have to select the better pedagogy. Based on the content and pedagogy, we have to select the proper technology. If you have this kind of knowledge aspects, if you had uh, developed, damn sure you made great teachers. That things we have to develop. Please. Uh, one more question, yes, sir. Next question. Is it possible to implement all these technologies in school or college classroom? Is it possible to implement? Actually, it is, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the answer is from the teacher side. So. Uh, if the teachers having the broad vision, 
we don't be depends on the institution or uh, a government so suppose i am the teacher if i am working in somewhere if i have the cards if i have the confident to build the technology things i can integrate the technology things like others we won't be depends on the other circumstances even if we don't have lcd projector we have to think about how to we can share our uh, power point with others so as a teacher uh, they have to think to different way as like a positive notes the teacher may take it if the teacher having the positive sense damn sure uh, th this kind of environmental background problem it won't be arise everything we may control it because i am using regularly in my classroom technology i won't depends on the institution things okay so that is nice sir that is very nice so you have some more questions maybe if time permits we can ask you some more questions that too from the chat box thank you and i also get uh, very good information from the chat box saying excellent presentation very informative presentation etc so thank you so much sir uh, uh, next thank i would you. like to call upon thank you sir uh, i would like to call upon reverend father maria lewis to uh, give us insights on education for meaningful life father you are welcome yes thank you ma'am So I'm happy to participate in this panel discussion. Thanks to the secretary, principal, Alma ma'am, and the organizing committee for this opportunity. Our topic is EduLead 2020. So education for a meaningful life. That is a title I have taken. Meaningful learning is active, constructive, long lasting, that which allows students to be fully engaged in the learning process. And therefore, any learning that is active, constructive, long lasting, that which allows students to be fully engaged in the learning process becomes a meaningful learning. I'd like to differentiate between rote learning and meaningful learning. We know it. Rote learning is where learners are unable to relate new information to prior information. So they learn in a compartmentalized way. There is no connectivity. What they learn now, they don't connect it to the previous knowledge that they gained. Whereas meaningful learning is just the opposite, where learners are able to relate new information to prior information. Then learning becomes meaningful. In this connection, we can talk of Transfer of learning. Transfer of learning means the use of previously acquired knowledge and skills in new learning or problem solving situations. Thereby, similarities and analogies become between previous and actual learning content and processes may play a crucial role. And therefore, when we learn something in one particular environment, we are able to transfer that knowledge to another environment or situation. There are three types of transfer of learning, we know. What is called positive transfer. When learning in one situation facilitates learning in another situation positively, it is known as positive transfer. It is going to make a positive impact on the learner. Negative transfer. When learning of one task makes the learning of another task harder, it is known as negative transfer. It makes another learning difficult. Then it becomes negative. Neutral transfer. There is no change. 
I would like to move on to cognitive skills because meaningful learning teaches students important cognitive skills. What are cognitive skills? Cognitive skills are the core skills your brain uses to think, read, learn, remember, reason, and pay attention. And therefore, these are the cognitive skills that you are, your brain is using to think, read, learn, remember, reason, and pay attention. Higher order cognitive skills. Concept acquisition, for example. Yes, we learn. We acquire knowledge. But concept clarity is not there in many learners today. And therefore, concept acquisition is very important in learning. That is a higher order cognitive skill. You need to be clear about what you are learning. Systematic decision making is a higher order cognitive skill. Decision making itself is a very hard task for many. Systematic decision making is a wonderful thing. Evaluative thinking. Yes, thinking, but evaluative thinking. You evaluate which is right, which is wrong, which is good, which is not good. Evaluative thinking. You need to choose. Brainstorming is a higher order cognitive skill. In a given environment, people are able to come out with ideas not thought previously. That becomes brainstorming. Innovative things come out spontaneously. Rule usage. A rule that you learned in particular environment, you are able to use it in another environment. You are able to apply it. Some examples of cognitive skills. Sustained attention. That is becoming a very difficult thing today for many, I feel. Not able to pay attention in a sustained manner. People often switch from one to another. They are not, not able to sustain, not able to pay attention. That is the problem that many learners are facing today. And therefore, this, is, this becomes very important today. With the use of media, cell phone and everything, people are not the learners, students are not able to pay attention in a sustained manner. Selective attention. Yes, so many things are available today. But now you need to select which one to pay attention to. That you need to learn. Otherwise, we will be at a loss. Divided attention. At times, you may need to pay attention to many things at the same time. It's not enough to be selective. You need to pay attention to many things at the same time and still remember them. That is an art which we need to develop. Long term memory. Yes, we remember things for a short while. That is because we learn things only for an exam. If we need to retain things in the memory for a longer time, we need to develop our own memory power. Working memory. That is that that also is a cognitive skill. Sometimes we need to have only working memory for certain things. We need not remember certain things forever. Logic and reasoning, very important thing. Auditory processing, visual processing. All these things are examples of cognitive skills. And therefore, if our learning to be a meaningful learning, education to be meaningful, we need to develop these cognitive skills. It is not just memorizing something. It is not just learning something. It is not just cramming something. But then we need to really practice these cognitive skills. Another factor that I would like to stress here for a meaningful learning is life skill. What are life skills? Skills that are necessary or desirable for full participation in everyday life 
or call life skills. And therefore, education should be related to life. It is not just, okay, we learn something for the sake of learning. It is not just for the sake of learning. Education is not an end in itself. It is for living a better life. And therefore, skills that are necessary or desirable for full participation in everyday life are called life skills. WHO lists 10 life skills. Problem solving, critical thinking, effective communication, decision making, creative thinking, interpersonal relationship, self-awareness building, empathy, coping with stress and coping with emotion. If you look at this list, all these things are very, very important today to live a full life. Yes, people are educated. They have degrees, but many people do not know how to live their life. That is a problem. And therefore, they are not able to solve the problems of life, the problems that they face day to day. They do not have a critical thinking, critical view of life. Effective communication. On that rests everything. People may have so many degrees behind their name. But what counts at the end is how you are able to communicate an idea to the hearers. A teacher is not just judged by the qualification, but how effective he or she is. Decision making. We need to make decisions. Mostly people leave it to others to decide for them because nobody wants to take risk of making decisions. Suppose my decision goes wrong, what will happen? There is a fear. Creative thinking, very much needed today. We cannot just be on a beaten path. We cannot just walk on the rut. We need to be creative. We need to do things creatively. That is what the world is expecting today. Interpersonal relationship, which is becoming really hard today. People are tied down to their own social media and therefore interpersonal relationship becomes very very difficult today even to call her own son or daughter for a meal the mother has to make a call in the same house life has become so difficult today interpersonal relationship is really strained self-awareness building unless and otherwise we know what we are our learning becomes a waste. Empathy, another factor, another skill that is really having a problem today with one child in a family. Family is becoming very small. This empathy is becoming a real issue. Not able to understand the pains of others. Coping with stress. Very, very important. Even during this pandemic, many questions are being asked on that. Yes, a stress is the word that is commonly heard today by everyone. Everyone, even small children today talk about stress. I am in, I am on stress. I am really stressed. That is what they say. It is everybody's problem today. And therefore, coping with stress becomes all the more important, especially during this pandemic when people are locked down in their own houses, not able to move out, that becomes a stress. And therefore, we need to give also a lesson to cope with stress, coping with emotion, emotional quotient, we talk about, emotional balance, all that is important. Otherwise, life becomes very difficult. So, some suggestions as how to develop life skills. To develop self-confidence is one thing. Yes, unless and otherwise we have self-confidence, we cannot really have life skills. We cannot really live our life. Really, we cannot make our education meaningful. The ability to self-motivation. We cannot always expect others to motivate us. We need to motivate ourselves. Yes, I can. I must tell myself, I can. I can do this. I can perform. I can become someone great. 
willingness to take risks. As I said, people are not making decisions because nobody wants to take risks. So willingness to take risks, the ability to assess the consequences of our own decisions. When I make decisions, I should be able to bear also the consequences of it. We should be ready for that. Willingness and ability to advance new solutions, being creative, being different, being novel, all that is important. In this connection, we need to also have value based education, inculcation of values, very important. And therefore, 2020, we are in 2020 and we are moving ahead. We need to have value based education again and again, being stressed because. The society is becoming valueless. There is a value crisis in society, so to say. Values are standards or ideals with which we evaluate actions, people, things, or situations. Therefore, education plays an important role in the building up of values and attitudes to enable the active participation in life. In this connection, there is a need of value education because the present society is in a value crisis. Values are not born in nature. They are acquired and inculcated. There are different types of values. Personal values we need to acquire for our own personal living. Family values that we need to imbibe to live a family life. Professional values where we work related to our profession. National values, moral values, spiritual values, cultural values and the like. And therefore, all these should be should become part of education. Only when education is taking into consideration all these values into it, then education can really bear the desired fruit. Value education, talking on this, ma'am already said in the introduction when introducing me, I was teaching value education to the students. Then I said, we need to really make it work. We need to make it practical. So I said, one of the values we need to practice is honesty. And therefore, two things I did. One, I said, examination will be conducted without any invigilator. You know that you have studied and therefore you write the exam. And the four invigilators will just go give question papers and then return to the staff room. The students will be writing the exam. Sometimes I just used to go out of curiosity to see everybody will be at their paper writing. Not even one turning this side or that side. When you really place confidence on the students, they really imbibe the value. The value of honesty was learned. Not even one person I have seen copying. And therefore, it can be done. And we should be ready for that. We should be ready to take risks. We should be ready to take risks. Yes. But when you do that, yes, we get the desired effect, result. There is an honesty store where things are there, stationery, some snacks. I tell them nobody will be there to sell things. You just go pick up what you want. Put the money there in the box. Nobody is there to watch you, not even camera. And therefore, students were doing that. And therefore, we need to make values work. We need to make education work. We need to make education practical. Otherwise, it should not just remain only in the classroom. That should be transferred to real life situations. That is what I feel today. So, Age Lead 2020, we are discussing today, this education should be transferred. Education should be taken to real life situations. For that, they need to have cognitive values, cognitive skills, life skills, and all these values into them. Then life will become easier. When I was teaching in a school, another example, just like to quote, I was teaching about patriotism. I said one of the acts of patriotism is taking care of a plant. So I said one practical thing would be, you know, in the water bottle that you bring, there may be little water remaining at the end of the day. When you go out of the classroom, what normally the students do, they just pour water on the ground 
and play with that and go. I said, go and pour that water for a plant. At least that plant will live. That is an act of patriotism, I said. From that day, the students were doing that. School students. Another act of patriotism is to take care of our surroundings. And therefore, I said, after the school hour, school is over. Today, we will go to the nearby road. That is that uneven road that is there. We will make it even. We will put some mud and we will fill up the holes there. You will not believe all the students were there. And therefore, students are ready. If only the teachers are ready to do that. And therefore, life is so beautiful life is so beautiful education is so beautiful it should not just remain in the classroom only once we are, once we are able to transfer it and give the values of life i am sure people will value it more thank you father that was an excellent presentation father uh, we have got so many informations from you. Uh, due to the time factor, I have one question for you. Uh, that is, every moment the world is changing, right? We have to face the changes that is there. How a teacher has to face the changes? And uh, how are we going to balance between skills, knowledge and character? Can you give some suggestions? Yeah. So skills, knowledge and character. Yes. All this should become part of the teacher, first of all. So teacher is not just a person who gives knowledge only. And most of the time, many of the teachers think that actually. Our aim is to give knowledge. It is not transfer of knowledge from the head of the teacher to the head of the student. It is very clearly said. That is not knowledge actually. And that is what we think we should do. So it is much more than that. It is much more. It is much more than that means it is our own character. Students actually learn more from looking at the teacher. The way they dress, the way they walk, the way they behave. Their character speaks much more than their words. And therefore, life speaks louder than words. And for every teacher, if only they are able to imbibe this and say... I am not a teacher only for teaching a particular subject. I am radiating my own self. I am giving my own self. And that if that is clear, I think education will become a very, very powerful instrument. Okay. Thank you, Father, um, for the very nice and beautiful answer. We will try to adapt. We will try to balance our knowledge, our skills, and our values. And uh, I think in the chat box, all, all of them are uh, messaging. They are saying very informative and thought-provoking session. Uh, uh, I, from the chat box, all, uh, box also, we have uh, uh, too many questions. For the want of time, uh, uh, two or three questions only. Uh, OK? Uh, just uh, one is, uh, they have uh, constantly, they have been repeating uh, one question. Entrepreneur skills and vocational skills, are they one and the same? Tell my mom. Tell me. Yeah. Tell my mom, kind of unmute. Tell my mom. Yes. So, uh, repeat, ma'am, your question. Entrepreneur skills as well as the vocational skills, they are one and the same. That is their question. In, in, in my perception, not the same. Vocational stream, you select and accordingly, you go with that particular occasion which you prefer. Entrepreneurial skills, it includes the totality of a personal, uh, how they have to carry themselves in uh, varied uh, areas, varied areas, how you are going to develop yourself in a situation where it demands your skill to be exhibited. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, one more question uh, from the audience side. Uh, I think this is for Dr. Tiago. In a digital divide, depending on technology, 
how we are going to be effective depending on the technology how we are going to be effective so here we can think about in in what effective way we are integrating the technology that is the answer for this so because uh, the teachers we are using technology but we are not using it effectively that is a biggest problem so when the people are hearing any technology immediately they incorporate it that is not a correct they have to find out the which technology is more apt for that particular pedagogy and yes. that particular technology when we can use for transcend the particular content so that knowledge if we have damn sure our technology may be more effective so that is we have to look on it the teachers can find out here better tool better pedagogy for the content delivery that is the teacher side only we have to decide yes okay okay yes. i think one more question uh, this is from my side as teachers we are all moving from prof professional collaboration to collaborative professionalism what do you think about it it is a discussion for us all of us shall i repeat please repeat as teachers as teachers we are all moving from professional collaboration to collaborative professionalism what do you think about it uh, from my end to do justification towards what i spoke in the beginning you must be an entrepreneur you must have that entrepreneurship skills to exhibit all your uh, i mean even the instant uh, the decision has to be taken according to the incidental and unexpected uh, unexpected situations you must be able to handle it that is how your entrepreneurship skill must train you and take you keep on developing yourself towards facing better and harder situations yeah i would uh, um uh, yeah. yeah can i yes yes professional collaboration was something of the past in the sense we were all stuck with just our field of specialization and in case we wanted to expand our field we had to reach out to someone else and collab try to make a connection but today nothing can be uh, addressed individually because everything is highly interlinked the very fact that we uh, i mean browse from the internet itself is a collaborative professionalism because everybody takes from the same source and every subject today is not dealt with just by chalk and talk or just using the board a blackboard and the chalk so we are using technology we are using classroom and we are uh, moving into an interdisciplinary aspect of uh, teaching every subject has become very interdisciplinary if i if i take my own subject as geography it's not just geography today i deal with the environment in such a high level but technologically i'm talking about gis and remote sensing then i go on into fields like disaster management which are so essential for which for society i have to face it from that point just teaching plain geography will not so we yeah. need to incorporate so much to make it as a subject for the masses for addressing every situation at every uh, part of a period of time so we are moving in from a uh, professional collaboration earlier to collaborative professionalism because as a professional we have to collaborate in order to have because every aspect of ours is coming from different areas so our collaborative professionalism has become uh, it's not a change it is actually staying with us at present and i'm sure this will stay for quite a long time to come the collaborations may increase that's all dr tiago and dr rajendran so do you have anything to say okay it was an excellent yeah excellent presentation and excellent ins insights uh, shared by you panelists and now we have come to the end of the session i would just give a just of a little bit of it due to the want of timing okay 
be the change i just want to summarize and share your ideas a little bit of it only be the change you wish to see in the world says mahatma gandhi this quote inspires everybody because it keeps us grounded and reminds us uh, to stay unique and not to do what everyone does i think all the panelists discussed about the changes that everybody has to start within from themselves with dr thelma insisting on the entrepreneurial skills and uh, dr rajendra uh, urging about economic upliftment and dr maria insisting on the change from within and mentioning the shifting role of the teachers parents as well as the society and that to maria on the educators to help the individual to raise their own uh, power of excellence and you have been talking about every individual has to in introspect ourselves it was a good insight that we have gained from you and education needs human touch it is simply a superb insight uh, for today's education and dr piangu nailing his points about the latest technologies and recommending the teachers to change according to the changing scenario and with father maria lewis giving insights on the positive learning and the cognitive learning and uh, where are we and how we are going when dr maria was talking about where are we and how we are going dr was uh, the uh, father was concluding by saying that you have to have a meaningful life and meaningful learning what works with someone may not work for the other individual and you see the difference in oneself and see the impact that was uh, the real uh, insight given by father so thank you panelists and finally agile discussion concludes that education is not bombarding with content knowledge technology uh, technology made us to understand the complexity and education is to form a lifelong uh, a yeah. lover of learning as philosophy says love for wisdom love for knowledge here uh, quotes albert einstein once you stop learning you start dying so and with the realization of the self is the ultimate goal of education says the philosophers as well as the philosophers who are seated here as panelists giving their inputs so i am so thankful for this uh, panel discussion the participation uh, uh, of you and the agility promotes uh, and it is going to create ways of lifelong meaningful learning finally i would uh, like to conclude uh, for the participants uh, from the insights given by the panelists self organization learning environment i repeat self organization learning environment at home and in school will lead us to the 21st century that is what ajuli is talking about ajuli 2020 talks about self organization learning environment at home and in the school to lead to the 21st century thank you all and now is the time to thank all the panelists and uh, gratitude is the best attitude first and foremost i thank almighty for his constant loving guidance and support throughout this discussion on behalf of the management the faculty the administrative and non teaching staff and the entire stella martina family I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Thelma for her vibrant address and sparing her whole time, valuable time, and for highlighting the issues that we need to deliberate on during the panel discussion. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I would like to thank Dr. Rajendran uh, for his valuable insights about economic upliftment. thank you sir uh, in this uh, scenario you have been really talking about what is happening and uh, i thank you for for your insights thank you sir next i would like to thank 
Um, I take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Dr. Maria Anita to discuss the ideas where we are and where we are going. Your insights keep us thinking, ma'am, about how to go about in this future, uh, in this scenario, as well as in near future. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I would you. like to thank, I would like to thank Dr. Tiago. The continuous journey of learning to reach the highest point in performance is the sure way of achieving excellence. The role model of the younger generation of the education department is none other than Dr. Tiago. So I, I would like to thank you, uh, Dr. Tiago, for your excellent presentation. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank you. And uh, finally, I would like to thank Father uh, for his uh, commendable presentation, which you have been giving for us to think about the meaningful life and how we may have to lead in this present pandemic situation. So Father, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your valuable info, inputs on education for meaningful uh, li life and meaningful living. Thank you, Father. Now I would like to thank our management, Dr. Sister uh, Pauline Mary, for giving us this opportunity to discuss on the uh, use of education. So thank you, Sister, for your, uh, for your uh, um, permitting us to conduct a panel discussion. Thank you, sister. I would like to thank uh, our principal, Dr. Joseph Catherine, who is very flexible and uh, she gives freedom to do whatever we want to do. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to thank our staff, my dear colleague, uh, staff members who are really at the back of me, always encouraging and the support they are, uh, uh, they are being given. I, I would like to thank them. Thank you, my dear friends. I would like to thank uh, uh, um, uh, Axelia Francina and Jocelyn uh, Ranch, who were really here and making the live stream, stream successful. Thank you, Axelia, and thank you, uh, Jocelyn Ranch. We, without your support, we would not have uh, live streamed this uh, event. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to uh, thank our uh, uh, PhD scholars, Sandana Lakshmi and Father Maria Lewis, uh, sorry, Father John Lewis, John Lewis for uh, um, supporting behind us and uh, making this event a successful one. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you one and all. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, finally, for the participants, uh, without you participants, we to, the panel discussion would not be a successful one. I would like to thank all the participants for patient listening with us. And we have sent the feedback form for you. You can uh, uh, fill the form. And uh, especially uh, since this is in live streaming YouTube, whoever wants certificate, can fill the feedback form and send to us. Certificates will be sent to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hats, to, hats off to all panel members. Thank you. Just a word of thanks on behalf of all of us. Yeah. I just to like to thank uh, Stella Matatuna Institution of Education for grabbing the opportunity amidst the pandemic to organize this. As Dr. Telma first thanked in the beginning itself, i just like to thank uh, your secretary, the secretary of the college, Dr. Sistanita Pollan, who was my former principal. A special thanks to her, to the principal, and to the organizing secretary and the team who are working behind the stage to help bring about this panel discussion and for also including me as part of this, giving me a part of this podium. Thank you. I enjoyed the talks from all the other panelists. Fathers was very encouraging. And I like the way he had been using this in his school. And all the other panelists also, Dr. Dr. Telma, Dr. Rajendran, Dr. Thiago, 
and above all dr alma thanks a lot we thank enjoyed you. it thank you ma'am thank, thank you ma'am thank you shall officially close